Now, talking of making your own luck, there's one member of Parliament who's become rather well-known in the last 24 hours. This is what happened in the House of Commons just after midday yesterday. Mr Speaker, if anyone wants to see what uncontrolled immigration looks like, all they've got to do is wake up tomorrow morning, listen to the headlines and see what this government... Order, order. Ms Bristol, I think you're going to be leaving. I'm, I'm asking you to leave now, because otherwise I'll name you. I'm not having it, and I've warned you before. It's the same people. And the same will happen on this side. Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, the reason they're issuing so many visas is Labour and... Well, the MP that was booted out of the Chamber of the House of Commons yesterday was the Member of Parliament for Peterborough, Paul Bristow, and he joins me now. Are you the sort of back-of-the-class lout in Parliament? Is that what it is? Why is it always me? Um, well, there may be uh, a reason no, for this. No, I don't no. know. Um, no, look, to be honest, I, I do sledge a bit. I'm not going to lie. I do sledge a bit. But I don't think I'm the biggest offender in the House. And, uh, but unfortunately, I think I caught his eye. And look, when the Speaker tells you to leave, it's the right thing to do. You better leave. But as you can imagine, my phone went a bit wild. And I am a bit embarrassed about it. I have apologised to him. But uh, what I actually said was when he said, let me tell you about uncontrolled immigration, I'll tell you what it looks like, uh, I shouted, yelled, vote Labour. So that's right. what I was, uh, that's what I was um, <laughs> booted out for. So what you meant then, Paul Bristow, was the numbers would be even higher under Labour? Well, they've got an open-door borders policy. Well, you I? have too. Uh, well, we're, we're trying to... You know, numbers are far too high, there's no doubt about it. Don't you and... tell me numbers are far too high. You know, I see government ministers, Rishi Sunak, saying the pressure on public services is unsustainable. Yeah. I've been telling them that for 20 years. Well, I don't disagree with you. And I think Peterborough is a city. Immigration has benefited Peterborough in many ways. But it also puts a huge amount of pressure on public services, on local housing needs. Yes. So, look, I completely agree with you. And I think today... Hopefully, it's a shock that a lot of us need. We're going to, if we break down some of those figures, uh, at least 170 or so thousand of them are people from Ukraine or from Hong Kong, yep. people we've given visas to. I don't think anyone's seriously suggesting that we shouldn't have supported those people. And isn't it something, by the way, the very people who sit there and say this country is intolerant, it's racist, oh. all this sort of nonsense, we're actually we're giving such a fantastic support Look, to those people fleeing conflict. We've allowed half a million people in as genuine refugees since the referendum. So the idea that we're somehow mean-spirited is for the birds. I agree with you. But you see, the point I'm making, Paul Bristow, and this is what matters, when Cameron promised tens of thousands a year, he was told by those around him, as EU members, it's not achievable, Mr Cameron. Oh, well, never mind. We'll just go on saying it. And when Boris Johnson promised to control immigration, we now know, from what was said inside number 10, he never believed in it. He was just telling the electorate what he wants, what, you know, what he thought they wanted to hear. And here's my problem. This is dishonesty. This is lying to the British public and hoping they agree with you that Labour would be Let me worse. Say, there are many in the Conservative Party, many in Parliament, who do agree that immigration is too high and do want to break down those numbers. So let's just look at those <laughs> figures that we've talked about today. 174,000 of them are from Hong Kong, are from Ukraine. You've said that already. Uh, and then, but then you've got over oh, about 200,000 who are students and their dependents. Now, the number of dependents... Whoa, whoa, the whoa, whoa, whoa. Dependents, Why should a student, why should any university student bring a dependent in? I completely agree with you. I mean, if I'm going to go and do my masters... But your government's done gonna, this. If you're going to go and do your masters, you don't need to bring your mother with you. I completely agree with you. So why has your government done this? Well, today, what we've announced today, uh, uh, is a crackdown on that. We're going to bring that number... That number used to be, I think, about... 11,000 or 16,000, I think, and it's actually increased about 174,000 in just about three years. Now, that's far too many, mm. and I think that backdoor route to immigration, that has been closed, because we're going to ban uh, that, the dependents. Do you know what? I don't believe you. I don't believe We've you. We've got to give it a go. Because right? I, I, I keep hearing this. <laughs> you know... I heard Pretty Patel on the illegal immigration. I saw Boris Johnson at Lyd Airport talking about Rwanda. 140 million quid spent. Not a single person been sent to Rwanda yet. I don't believe, Paul, we're going to deal with this. Certainly with the illegal stuff, yeah. all the while we're members of ECHR. And on the legal stuff, you know, we, we were told we'd move to a high-skilled migration level. That would mean people coming in who earn a lot of money. 
Yeah. Actually, you can come into Britain for way below the average salary. Yeah. The doors are literally open. Well, I don't disagree with any of that. I don't disagree with the idea that we need to transform places like Peterborough away from a low-wage, low-skill economy into a high-wage, high-skill economy. Okay. I'll tell you what cheap labour is, Nigel. Cheap labour... Basically, we've been addicted to it for the past sort of 20 years. And the UK economy, it grows a little bit like this, a little bit like this with cheap labour, but it has all those consequences as a result of it. What we actually need to do is to bring those economically inactive people that you've talked about, focus on retraining, reskilling, and guess what? Tinkering yeah. with the universal credit system. And, and we, so we can encourage these we, people yeah, back into yeah, work. Yeah. We've got to stop penalising people on benefit for going back into work. Absolutely right. We also, I think, have to make some people who appear to be rather reluctant to work. Yeah. You know, maybe a bit of a carrot and stick approach. Paul, if I'm a voter in Peterborough, I'm a Brexiteer, we're in Brexit territory. We are. And I, I'm disgusted. I feel the Tory government has failed me on Brexit. It's not cut regulation. It's not cut migration. I feel let down like a cheap pair of braces. Why should I vote for you and not Labour in Peterborough next Well, let's time see now? where we are by the next general election. Let me give you three good reasons why I think I should be returned as the Member of Parliament for Go Peterborough. On. Because I think what this is all about is trying to turn Peterborough into a high-wage, high-skill economy. We've not had the level of investment, transport infrastructure investment, in the city over the past 20 years that we deserve. Since I've been elected in 2019, we've had well over 100 million worth of investment. That goes to our university, which is going to be the, the means to create that high skill, high wage economy. And a new that's railway re bridge. That's regenerating our city centre. We've got £23 million pounds to do that. And yep. we've got £48 million pounds to build a new station quarter. And everyone says to me, well, why are we spending £48 million pounds on a new station? Mm. Well, we're not. We're actually building a brand new station quarter, which will be the gateway to our city not just the, ga the gateway to the east of England, in fact, because Peterborough's right. the busiest do you believe you, station. Do you believe you can hold this seat? Yeah, I'm going to hold the seat. Final thought. The Conservatives did much better in the local elections in Peterborough... We did. ..than we did around the country. We did. Why is that? Because I think the Conservatives and the City Council, and I think myself, have got a strong track record. I'm a high-profile active local member of We well, are very high profile now. Well, for, the wrong <laughs> for the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons.